love making for longevity a recipe from tokyo's imperial archives ion essays by dennis noble biology essay ion magazine february 11 2022 dennis noble is emeritus professor of cardiovascular physiology at the University of Oxford. He was the first to develop computer models of the heart published in Nature in 1960 and is one of the founders of the field of systems biology. His books include The Music of Life 2006 and Dance to the Tone of Life 2016. Ion Magazine has offices in London, Melbourne, New York. It is non-for-profit, registered, charity operated by Ion Media Group Limited. Ion is endorsed as Deductible Gift Recipient, DGR, organization in Australia, and through its affiliate Ion America, registered as a charity in the United States. Aeon is committed to big ideas, serious inquiry, humane worldview. That's it. Copyright Aeon Media Group Limited 2012-2022 Illustration is borrowed from Edison Sad Edition 1992 Little Brown Company, United States. Read, recorded, edited, posted at social media. Alex Sopko, PhD, 8762728, Southwest IL. Tokyo's Imperial Archives advice what science now confirms. The secret for longevity lies in the gentle arts of the bedroom. For more than a thousand years, the imperial family of Japan and its physicians have preserved the treasure of oriental medicine. The complete 30 scrolls of Ishinho, the heart of medical prescription. This compendium was derived from the sources in India, China, Korea, and elsewhere, though many of the original documents have since been lost and destroyed. In 2012, I found myself in Imperial Archives in a Tokyo palace examining the precious scrolls. I was delighted to discover a holistic approach not only did I find herbal medicine, remedies and nutrition and lifestyle aids, but also scroll 28, illustration for creation and preservation of Jinki life force with a focus on sexual energy. These prescriptions, which originated at least 2,000 years ago, in East Asia were almost the opposite of Western ideas, since they required achievement of orgasms without the loss of semen. The idea dates to 10th century, during Heian period, golden age of Japanese poetry and literature. The poet Sei Shuangon 966-1025, wrote a pillow, the pillow book, while Murasaki Shikibu, 978-1014, a fellow lady-in-waiting at the imperial court, wrote one of the world's first and greatest novels, The Tale of Genji, relating the adventurous romantic life of a prince. All those works, and more, 
reveal natural approach to sexual relations, common in ancient Japan. Such naturalness was also a feature of ancient China, evident from the tomb excavation in Mabandui in Hanan province, uh, revealing texts of the art of love dating from around 200 BCE. A poem in this text, The Union of Yin and Yang, may be the first sex manual the world has preserved. For all these works, colorful metaphor describe the unhurried and careful approach to the joys of sexual intercourse. The emphasis was an exceedingly slow and gentle movements, beginning with caressing what seems to be mysterious energy meridians within the body. What a perfect setting to the great compendium itself, written by a Japanese court physician Tamba Yasuori in 984. It was in scroll 28 of Tamba's masterpiece that classic Chinese narrative is revealed through teachings of three women said to have advised mythical yellow emperor of his longevity exercises. When I was able to revisit the scrolls again in 2018, together with leading members of the modern medical establishment in Japan, I could identify for my medical colleagues uh, prominent red marks over the names of the three women. One of them, whose name I translate as the original woman, Su Nu, a kind of Chinese Eve, uses one of the oldest of the intimacy poems from around 200 uh, uh, each line CE each line in the poem could be interpreted either as a individual intimate acts or as acts with different partners as would be the case for monarchs with multiple wives and consorts in this translation I have attempted to reproduce the four character rhythm of the original. Each line and its response contains four Chinese characters, each pronounced as a single syllable, making eight syllables in a two lines together. The much older Mabangdui poem The Union of Yin and Yang is also a character poem of this type, but it uses three characters instead of four. Repetitive rhythm was important in the transmission of texts such as sutras and poems then writing materials were scarce, and monks and poets had to memorize long rare paper on which the scrolls are written in extremely fragile and original version is now on national treasure kept in the National Museum in Tokyo. Of course, this poem, like many other ancient Chinese poems on the arts of love, needs metaphorical interpretation. Words such as immortal do not carry the same meaning as then is used in Western religions. The aim of the poem is to encourage general improvement of health and longevity. The deeper truth of the poem is that everything is interrelated. This is precisely what modern science finds using associations between genes and disease. Most genes contribute to most diseases. Some modern scientists using genome sequencing go so far as to formulate the omnigenic theory, which is the theory that all genes contribute in some way 
or other to health and disease states. It works the other way around, too. Gene expression is also controlled by epigenetic states. When the external environment tunes genes up or down, we do not have selfish genes. The selfishness or kindness comes from our integrated selves, not from biomolecules such as DNA. Even scientists uh, today use metaphor to express what they mean. The scrolls, all written in classical Chinese, require great skill to translate into modern Japanese. This has been the life work of Sahiko Maki, who labored for more than 40 years to produce the complete modern Japanese translation in a series of 34 volumes. A gift from the herbal remedy company Tsumura, entered at Oxford, is now one of the few universities in the world to possess not only Sahiko's translation, but also a complete facsimile of calligraphic scrolls. The translation into modern Japanese is important. Very little of the Ishinho has been translated into English. What the Japanese version reveals is that Tamba was greatly influenced by Buddhism in his choice of what to preserve of the ancient Chinese texts. All animal products, all potential toxic metals were excluded. The only remedies are herbal, nutritional or sexual. In fact, these medical prescriptions have long posed a translation challenge beyond just metaphorical. They are sexually explicit, but their translators were originally late 19th or early 20th century Europeans with Victorian sensibilities to match. In fact, the Dutch sinologist and diplomat Robert Hans van Gulik even went so far as to translate them into Latin in 1961 in order to restrict access to their texts, as well as to their accompanying erotic prints from the Ming dynasty, to academic scholars only. If a library didn't agree to this, Van Kulik refused to provide them with a copy. As a pioneer in modern systems biology and its multi-level view of organisms, I immediately appreciated traditional Asian view that parts of the human body should not be viewed in isolation, but rather holistically as a part of the whole uh, integrated communicative system. Tamba clearly documented this philosophy and broken line of physicians from his self all the way back to the third century. BCE. It was at a chance meeting in New York's branch with Oxford academics in 2016 that I began discussing the scrolls, and specifically scroll 28 with entrepreneur Leslie Kenny. Kenny was working with the scientist Katya Simon, Ganda Al Saleh from University of Oxford on a compound called spermidin, named for its presence in semen, where it was originally discovered. Unusually, she also had experience as sexologist in China and was familiar with the ancient Taoist practices and beliefs around sexual arousal, intimacy and their health benefits. She also knew of Oxford's research demonstrating that spermidine triggered autophagy, body's inbuilt ability 
to renew and recycle cells. Foundation of life, your full life itself. So important is autophagy that Asumi Yoshinori, a Japanese scientist, was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology of Medicine in 2016 for discovering its mechanism of action. Kenny wondered aloud whether the reason for arousal, but not ejaculation, was so that man would resorb his own spermidine and thereby benefit from a boost in cellular autophagy and the resulting beneficial biological effects. I too had wondered about the possible benefits of resorbing sperm to male, male health. In order to test our theory, we needed to define what aging was and then prove that the instructions of the scroll 28 led, led to halting it. One of the most frequently cited scientific research studies on this topic was published in 2013 in the premier biology journal Cell. The paper by the Spanish biochemist Carlos Lopez Otin and his colleagues in Madrid, Cologne, London and Paris hypothesized nine hallmarks of aging and posited it was possible to halt the aging process. Rather than simply treating the symptoms of cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's and cancer, among other diseases of aging, Lopez Orton said one might be able to halt the onset of aging itself. If spermidine prevents dysfunction in our mitochondria, then it might protect human longevity as well. One of the potential agents he mentioned was spermidine. Because spermidine triggered autophagy, it was able to prevent many of these hallmarks of aging. But spermidine did more than that. It also protected mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondria, energy powerhouse of the cells, was American biologist Lynn Margulis, who first championed theory of mitochondria, were once independent microbes that joined other cells through the process of symbiogenesis to form complex organisms we see around us today. More recently, host of new studies reveal that spermidin guards against aging of mitochondria. If spermidin prevents dysfunction in our mitochondria, the basis of cellular energy, then it stands the reaction that it may protect human longevity as well. And protecting mitochondria is just the start. Scientists have recently discovered that spermidine can prevent an additional four negative hallmarks of aging. Epigenetic changes that damage gene expression, impaired maintenance of proteins, impaired production of stem cells, disruption of intercellular communication. Emerging research suggests it may also inhibit cellular senescence. In fact, the only other compound found to prevent six of those negative markers was a drug called rapamycin, produced by bacterium discovered on Easter Island, also known Papua Nui, which unfortunately causes immunosuppression. Spermidin has no known side effects. That left another hallmark of aging, erosion of telomeres, tips that protect the ends of chromosomes from damage. Might telomeres themselves somehow be protected by the lovemaking for longevity recipe? Elizabeth Blackburn, and our winner of Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, Professor Emerita at Salk Institute for Biological Sciences in California, discovered the power of telomeres along with the enzymes called telomerase 
that can lengthen those telomeres, thus extending life. Her book, The Telomere Effect, 2017, co-written with health psychologist Elisa Appel at the University of California, San Francisco, showed that meditation could cause the body to produce more telomerase, thus promoting longevity. Other evidence showed that mothers who had been stressed during the pregnancy gave birth to babies with shorter telomeres. Apple and her colleagues did a further study in 2017 showing that couples who were sexually intimate also benefited from longer telomeres. For the team could not explain a mechanism of action other than possible release of oxytocin, a hormone similar to that released by breastfeeding mothers and their babies. Kenny wondered whether the synchronization of the heart rate, breath, breath, gaze between two lovers, as described in Ishinho, was mechanism of action. Indeed, there was no such telomerase benefit on the control group of couples who described themselves as happily married but who hadn't recently been sexually intimate. Whatever the mechanism of action behind the telomerase production, it was clear that the two lovers needed intentionally come together physically join as one in order to receive the longevity benefit. But if spermidine and telomerase could together hold back nearly all the markers of aging, what was the purpose of the rest of the longevity prescription in translated scrolls? In particular, I was intrigued by a curious Taoist fascination with human saliva, in fact, the ancient Taoists would even perform ceremonies in which cups of saliva were exchanged to enhance health. As a scientist and historian, I have spent a great deal of time poring over the work of Charles Darwin, reconciling him with current scientific discoveries and making sure that Darwin's legacy and intent is properly communicated to future generations of scientists. Darwin was a slow, thorough thinker. He integrated many processes into his work on evolution, Origin of Species, 1859. And in several other books, contrary to what many evolutionary biologists think today, Darwin realized that our bodies must communicate with their germ cells, sperm and eggs. One of my own recent conclusions is that modern science has discovered the teeny components involved in that communication. Today we call them extracellular vesicles or exosomes. We also know that saliva contains exosomes. Originally discovered in 1983, exosomes were at first discarded by scientists who regarded them as extracellular rubbish. However, as more experiments were conducted, particularly with stem cells, it became clear that stem cell therapies work better when delivered together with exosomes. Taking these experiments one step further. It appeared that exosomes were actually more valuable than the stem cells themselves. Thus, exosomes have been proved to communicate with germ cells. I wondered whether the instructions for longevity in scroll 28 meant that body's meridians or energetic channels, so fundamental to traditional Eastern medicine, were activated by a gentle touch of the intervene couple. 
if the exosomes contained in the saliva exchanged when kissing follow these meridians, they may act as a signpost to the omnipresent very small stem cells in the blood, telling them where to go to repair tissue, but also changing cell receptors themselves. Could mysterious meridians be some function of the exosomes? Was it possible that ancient Taoists had found a way not only to hold back the hands of time by intentionally activating production of spermidine and telomerase, but that exchange of exosomes and activation of energetic meridian channels could also restore the emperor's youth? I think it might be. As a medical scientist, I have long been fascinated by nature's ability to create its own pharmacopoeia and know that the human body's own internal pharmacy does this too by constantly sensing and assessing internal and external state, striving to continually stay in a balance or homeostasis. The evolution of plants over hundreds of millions of years has certainly created the chemical combinations that work, whether to the advantage of organisms that eat them, or sometimes to the disadvantage when the mix is toxic. Herbal remedies exploit this evolutionary success of plants over millions of years. Consumation should occur only three times out of ten and only with a woman when wishing to conceive a child. I suspect that the trafficking of extracellular vesicles between all parts of the body may also be involved in another crucial feature of the ancient Chinese scrolls, since the emphasis on the foreplay was on exceedingly slow, gentle movements, beginning with caressing of what seemed to be the mysterious energy meridians within the body. Incidentally, those should not be confused with the channels, nerves, blood vessels, familiar to Western medicine. My guess is that caressing and massaging may trigger a release of vesicles across many areas of the body. Could this correspond to the notion of the meridian? Many scientists dismiss this concept from Chinese medicine, but not everything that exists can be visualized easily, as well uh, as we well know from modern particle physics. Breath, gaze, heart rate between lovers become synchronized during foreplay until actual coitus occurs, but it would be harmful for the man to consummate the love act at this point. The text of Su Nu suggests that consummation should occur only three times out of ten and only with a woman when wishing to conceive a child. All other uses of men's precious body fluids, in this case semen, would be viewed as exhausting the man's body, aging it prematurely. Whereas a woman and her in energy were greatly strengthened by a reaching climax. This was to be avoided at all costs by the man whose young energy would be robbed. So, crucial was the aspect that physician sages gave detailed instruction on how a man could avoid ejaculation while still reaching orgasm. Only a man mastered this life-enhancing technique, he would be capable of multiple orgasms just like a woman and enjoy a long and healthy life. That is especially true of the text excavated in the early 70s from 2,200 year old aristocratic tombs at Mawangdui site in China. The remarkable poem, 
the union of yin and yang, was found on the set of bamboo slips. The metaphors are different from the poem of the original woman in the Ishinho, but the message is essentially the same. Cultivating the gentle arts of the bedroom is the secret of longevity. Tamba Scroll 28, therefore, accurately portrays culture of ancient China. It makes sense that this ancient knowledge was preserved by the Japanese. Unlike China, where literature was often lost or burned as one dynasty succeeded another, the imperial line in ja Japan survived for more than a thousand years. This may also be the reason why sexually explicit texts continue to be highly valued. Some 4,500 poems survive in a Manioshu collection from the Nara era, 710-794 CE. Many of them written by women openly expressing sexual longing. The Heian era, Heian era, 794-1185, continued this tradition. There again women poets, such as Ono no Komachi and Izumi Shikibu, flourished by the Ukiyo, meaning floating world, or pleasure-seeking tradition continued until the 19th century. By contrast, China became prudish following its transition to a strong Neo-Confucian ethic during the 12th century. Indeed, Ye De Hui, first Chinese scholar to rediscover the Ishinho scrolls, especially Scroll 28 in Japan in 1903, was denounced by his fellow Chinese literary scholars. Furthermore, in the otherwise exhaustive magisterial work of Fang Yu Lan, A History of Chinese Philosophy, written in 1930s, Taoist ideas of sexual relations are conspicuous by their complete absence. The references to love use the neutral character ren, meaning benevolence in the filial sense. Tamba Yasuori's 1,000-year-old Ishinho is already a national treasure. It deserves to be a world treasure or a treasured memory of the world, as UNESCO category uh, puts it. As the world slowly emerges from the COVID-19 pandemic of the past two years and its disastrous effects on intimacy, we will need to rediscover how important close personal relationships are. We need to recover the will to live that inspired the longevity prescriptions of the Inshinho, when we can truly sing the greatest love poem of the medieval Western world, the Sestina of the 12th century provincial troubadour Arnaud Daniel. Quen paradis naura doble joy ma marma in a paradise my heart's joy will be doubled. As the 20th century French sinologist Marcel Granet put it, sex for ancient Chinese was, citation, far more sacred than for us, end of citation. It can be so once again for us too. Hashtags, sex and sexuality, hashtag, biology, hashtag stories and literature, February 11, 2022.
illustrations. Description of illustration. The classic of Su Nu with rhythmic translation and Chinese pronunciation. English text is provided. If done once, energy strong. If done two times, hearting, sight clear. If done three times, diseases gone. If done four times, soul is peaceful. If done five times, blood flows better. If done six times, something very important becomes very, very strong. Figure out what. If done seven times, bottom strengthens. If done eight times, body will shine. If done nine times, achieve long life. If done ten times, be immortal. The union of yin and yang from the Mavangdui tomb excavations in China. The poem's text was inscribed on a bamboo slips. This picture shows three slips or shaded columns from scans from the Bodleian Library at the University of Oxford together with standard Chinese transcription translation by the sinologue Donald Harper. Rim from the from the right from right to left. Recipe for whenever you conjoin yin and yang grips hands emerge at the young side of the wrists stroke that elbow chambers press the side of the underarms ascend the stove trivet press the neck zone stroke the receiving canister cover the encircling ring descend broken basin cross sweetly curve forward skim Sporting sea, ascend Constancy Mountain, enter the dark gate, ride the coital muscle, suck the essence and spirit upwards. Then you can have enduring vision and exist in a unison with heaven and earth. And so I have completed reading of the text and wish you happiness, joy, and all the best, best, best.